I am in amongst two very major things right now. I am doing all of the prep and getting ready and set up to deliver the five day inner circle for parents of hardworking teens next week. If you are not already in that group, then click the link that will be delivered with this video and come join me. It is completely free. And the second thing that I want to talk to you about in this video is I'm also in the midst of marking the year 12 ATAR external exams. Now I know some students are still finishing those exams, but what happens is as soon as an exam paper is done, it is literally sent for marking within a couple of days. So we have spent two days doing exam marker training for just the one extended response question that I am marking for this particular paper. And now I am right in and I've been doing like three days worth of marking since and we're still going. So this is just perfect timing. I don't think I've ever actually timed it quite like this where I am literally doing the marking and delivering, gonna be delivering the five day inner circle at the same time. It means I'm just gonna have so much fresh, so many fresh insights um observations and tips to be able to share now of course there's only so much in terms of the minute nitty-gritty detail that i'm allowed to share right now i am making my famous annual exam marker video diary as i go that i'll be able to share in future weeks once we get past this like this sensitive moment of going through and live doing it when I'm actually allowed to share some of the additional details. But what I wanna share with you right now are some of the insights and observations and the sort of overarching themes that I'm seeing coming through from doing this marking. I have jotted them down because I wanted to make sure that I cover off on them really clearly. The first one is that I am seeing some students missing key information that is given in the STEM of the question or in some of the resources that they are provided with as part of that question. So this is an extended response. It's almost like a mini essay, if I'm honest, that they're really expected to generate in their answer. And as part of this question, and you will sometimes see this, so there are often two parts, especially for larger questions, two parts of a question. There's the stem and the cue. The stem is like a little bit of introductory information or context. And then there is the cue, the part that actually tells them what they need to do. And this one has that and it has sources and, re um, and resources for them to use and that they are required to use as part of their response. And some students are either misreading or not properly fully reading the STEM that has some critical information and they are sometimes misreading or not accurately interpreting some of the resources and sources that are given to them. And what that means is that they are going off on the wrong path in their answer. Now, that doesn't mean that the information that they're writing is necessarily wrong. They're just not addressing the key parts and in the way that the question requires. They're sort of making it say what they think it says. And that's not actually what it's necessarily asking them or they're going off on tangents. So where a question is asking for challenges of a situation or of an event, students are starting to talk about the impacts and they're looking at the sources and they're looking at the references and even they may be interpreting those correctly, but they've started to talk about some of the positive impacts. Now it's still an impact and it's still correct. So this is always the thing, that information in their answer isn't wrong. It's not factually wrong, it's not incorrect, but it isn't responding to the actual question and addressing the key points that the question wants or taking the correct angle sort of of the argument or of that issue that it wants them to address. And I have seen a significant number of responses that I can tell this is a really strong student. Like it's a sophisticated, well-written response and the detail in there is really high quality. The problem is, is that I can give it very little credit, which Honestly, it's so hard. Like I will read and reread answers going, please let there be something in here that I can give credit to because it's heartbreaking. I know what kind of student that will be. And I know that they will have gotten out of that exam hall thinking, yeah, like, okay, I wrote a pretty solid answer. I got three or four paragraphs there. Like I addressed this, I addressed this. I managed to you know, include this information and I analyzed that in detail and whatever it might be. And they are gonna get, really a disappointing result. Like if they were to see that mark for that particular part, they're gonna be A, disappointed and so confused. And I completely understand it. 
I see it happening all the time. Those will be some of the students that are putting in some of their, you know, exams for appeal and the, the answer is going to come back exactly the same. And this is why it's also so important to critique and get, you know, expert feedback when they're doing practice questions or past papers and doing all of that exam prep. But that's, you know, something for another time. But the other thing that I am seeing is some students who are also on the flip side writing maybe just a couple of paragraphs, but they will also be potentially getting more marks if they are actually writing maybe something a little bit more basic, not having as much information, but they are getting exactly to what the question is asking. They are staying focused. They're not going off on tangents. They are addressing exactly what is in that marking guide because of course the marking guide is so tightly aligned with how that question is worded. And they are getting more marks than the students that are writing beautiful, sophisticated, long, detailed responses, but not hitting those criteria because they're not responding to exactly how the question was worded. How do we overcome that? By making sure that students have a strategy and a structure for breaking down the question, identifying the most important words in the question, and they're often not the ones that they think. It is not what is the topic of this question. Again, join me next week to get all of that, all of those strategies, all of those skills, all of those techniques that I will absolutely be sharing and I'm completely allowed to share and have been doing so for years. So I wanted to just share with you some of those observations. I want to share with you how it's possible for students to get high marks with less writing. I want to share with you how it is possible for students to write a fantastic answer and come out with that, oh my goodness, disappointing result. It's horrible to see. It's horrible to mark them, but they are there and they're there more often, way more often than I would like to see. Hope that having some of this awareness is helpful and that then you can go further to get some of those specific strategies, techniques and skills with me in the five day in a circle and any of my future events as well. So that's it from me for this week. Look out for my exam marker video diary coming in future weeks. Have a fantastic rest of your week. All the very best to any students that are still sitting exams and have end of year exams to come in those other year groups. This will be a fantastic time to get some of this information. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you again very soon.